Welcome back to getting started in Altium Designer. In this module, we will compile the design we have been working on. Let's review the design schematics. Here we see there are two schematic sheets. The first one we copied into this project contains the I.O. connector for the Raspberry Pi SPC. The second schematic, called Expansion Board, has the logic needed to provide a CAN bus interface for the Raspberry Pi. To compile the design, either right click on the project file and select Compile PCB Expansion Board Project, or use the project pull down menu and select Compile PCB Project Expansion Board. Once completed, you will see that the message window opens up. This indicates that there were ERC errors found during the compile. If there were only warnings, then the message window would not have opened. It's always a good idea to review all warnings as well as address any errors before starting the PCB layout process. By expanding the message panel, we can see the various panes. Here we can see there are warnings as well as errors. To sort them, click on the class tab. Now we see the various messages grouped, errors and warnings. By double clicking on the first error, we jump to the schematic where the error is. We can see that this is an input pin that is not being actively driven. The MCP2515 has a few input pins that we do not need to use and will instruct the compile process to ignore this error on each of the pins. This is done in Altium using directives. In this case, the no ERC directive for undriven inputs. Right click on the error listing in the messages window and select place specific no ERC for this violation. This puts a cross on the mouse that you place on the pin, like so. Now this will not generate an error in future compiles. We will do the same for the two remaining input pins, either by copying and pasting the directive or using the right click on the error listing. By recompiling, we see that the errors are gone, as well as the warnings for unconnected pins. Looking very close to the pins, we see a faint group of white dots. These represent the electrical hotspot or the location for connecting to the pin. If we look at the messages panel, we see there are still some warnings remaining. These are no driving source. By double clicking on one of the no driving source warnings, we jump to the schematic and can see the CAN RXD net, which connects between an input pin and to the junctions of two resistors. These resistors are modeled as non-active driving components, so Artem does not see any driver on the net. We can add a specific no ERC directive for these warnings if we want to clean them up. Likewise, the three input pins that we added this specific no ERC directives are also complaining about no driving source. To fully eliminate these warnings, add a full generic no ERC directive to each of the pins by right mouse click on the active menu bar and selecting generic on ERC. Now by recompiling, we see those warnings are no longer there. There is still, however, one warning remaining, a net having multiple names. This is okay as the ports and the net label do not match but are electrically connected. At this point we have checked the design for basic electrical rules. These electrical rules are defined for the project specifically and can be found by right clicking on the project file and selecting project options or from the project pull down menu. This opens up a new window with multiple tabs. The two we are concerned with here are the error reporting and connection matrix tabs. Looking at the error reporting we see a listing of various types of violations and to the right of each is the current setting reported if found during the ERCs. There are several levels from fatal error to no report. To change the level reported, click on the report mode entry and pick the new level. Please change these carefully as the defaults were developed over time based on PCB failures. To reset them, in case you have modified a few and want to get back to the defaults, click on set to installation defaults and then click OK. The next tab is the Connection Matrix tab and it shows the various combinations and the level supported for each. This is used for pins and ports whereas the error reporting tab was net centric. Changing the level is done by clicking on the block. The changing colour indicates the level of reporting. 
Next, closing this window and returning to the schematics, we have one more check to perform. Before sending the design to the PCB, we need to check to ensure that each of the components have a footprint that the tool can find. This is a precautionary check. With correct library components, it should not be an issue. Using the tool's pull-down menu, select Footprint Manager. The new window has a few panes. The leftmost has a full listing of all the parts in the design. Select all of them, starting at the top and then scrolling down. Hold the Shift key and click on the bottom entry. This puts all of the selected parts into the rightmost pane. Selecting all of them, we now click on the Validate button to ensure that they have footprints that can be found and therefore used on the PCB. With all of the footprints validated, we are ready to send the design to the PCB. In our next module, we will perform the transfer.